On the surface, it may seem obvious that Inazuma was inspired by the nation of Japan. However, Inazuma's Japanese influence goes beyond its appearances and even as deep as its culture and history. First, let's draw the first similarity between Japan and Inazuma, which is isolation. What makes Inazuma different from the other nations is that it is initially closed off from the rest of the world, not just geographically, but also politically by order of its ruling archon. This coincides with Japan's Tokugawa shogunate, a governing power that once ruled 1600s Japan. Just like Ball, the shogun Tokugawa Ieyasu sealed Japan's interaction with the outside world, with the small exception of Portuguese and Dutch merchants, much like how Inazuma has little interaction with the outside world through its mercantile port of Rito. The reason why Inazuma and Japan isolated themselves in the first place are actually pretty similar. First, let's discuss why Japan's shogun closed its borders. You see, Japan was not always a unified country. For a long time, it was under the system of feudalism. This meant that Japan was divided into territories led by separate daimyos who competed for power, thus owing to the name feud. Although everyone submitted to the same emperor, he was more of a religious idol than of any political power. As a result, the daimyos of Japan fought each other over territorial gain, hiring their own armies and samurai to carry out said fighting. This plunged Japan into years of what seemed to be endless fighting and civil war. The fighting did not end until a man named Tokugawa Ieyasu displayed his strength by defeating his strongest rivals. As a result, the emperor gave him a political title called Shogun, which is actually a military dictator by modern standards. Reluctant to see Japan in another period of civil war, the new Shogun was prepared to meet any caliber of action in order to keep the Japanese people united and peaceful. So the Shogun came up with a goal and a plan. The goal, prevent another civil war and protect Japan's united sovereignty. His plan, lock Japan away from the rest of the world. Let me explain. Tokugawa Ieyasu knew that wars were fought due to primarily one thing, diversity, the state of being different. Plenty of wars start over differences in religion and culture. So if we all practice the same Japanese religion, there would be no differences. No differences, no war. Interaction with other countries is the catalyst of diversity. When merchants, immigrants, and religious missionaries travel to other countries, it is common for some citizens of the host country to adopt their customs. Fearing that a variety of religions would not coexist peacefully among the Japanese people, Tokugawa thought that by closing down the country, it would prevent his subjects from coming in contact with new foreign religions. By doing this, the shogun thought that it would cease the creation of rivalries among his subjects. In order to enforce this, outsiders such as European priests, who wished to spread Western Christianity on Japanese soil, were tortured and killed by the shogun's government. This also included the Japanese citizens who sought to practice Christianity. In their eyes, this was all for the betterment of Japan. Many wars were fought between religious groups, so if there are no foreign religions to influence and supposedly separate the Japanese people, then there is no war. What I've explained is reminiscent of Ball's isolation of Inazuma. Ball secluded Inazuma from the rest of Tevat in order to keep its culture and societal structure in a preserved stasis and prevent it from changing due to outside influences. Just like how Tokugawa noticed the war and chaos caused by diversity, Ball noticed the destruction witnessed by advancing nations such as Kanria, whose ambition turned into arrogance and led to its death. Just like how Japan stamped out foreign religions to prevent wars, Inazuma stamped out ambition in order to prevent arrogance, and hopefully avoid another Kanria. Furthermore, perhaps the most intriguing correlation 
between the Tokugawa Shogunate and Inazuma is the Vision Hunt Decree. Remember how I mentioned earlier that the Japanese Shogunate was extremely hostile toward foreign religions, going as far as to kill Christians just to prevent foreign cultures from causing another war? Well, this seems to be recreated in the Vision Hunt Decree, the law where Ball confiscates the visions of ambitious Inazumans. In the lore of Genshin Impact, visions represent the Archon's appreciation for the ambition of an individual. Depending on which Archon notices the prowess of the individual, the person will get a corresponding elemental vision, establishing a sort of relationship with the Archon that granted them said vision. By this definition, and to some extent, a vision could be considered a religion. You see, the word religion stems from the ancient language of Latin. It means to have a relationship with a god or a deity. And what is a vision again? Someone's relationship with a god that admired their ambition. When Baal and her government confiscate elemental visions, it severs the ambitious people's relationship with the Archon that gifted them with such traits. With all of this in mind, we could see how this coincides with the Tokugawa Shogunate's decision to kill those of non-Japanese faiths. By preventing them from practicing foreign faiths, it too severs these people from the relationship they strive to keep with their god. While we're still on the topic of isolation, we could use this historical evidence to prove that Rito is the Inazuman equivalent to the Japanese city of Nagasaki. Let me explain. Although the Tokugawa Shogunate shut itself away from the rest of the world, it did have some small exceptions when trading with European countries. We may know Nagasaki for the dropping of the atomic bomb, but it was during this time the only port where foreign merchants were able to interact with the Japanese. The same thing goes with Rito, since during the Vision Hunt Decree, it was the only place in Inazuma where we see foreigners from Fontaine and Mondstadt trade with the country, very much representing the European tradesmen that landed in Nagasaki. In addition to isolation, there is another element that connects Inazuma to Japanese history, eternity. Whereas Barbados is the god of freedom, and Rex Lapis is the god of contracts, Baal is the goddess of eternity, and she's rather obsessed with it. The same goes with Japanese culture. Eternity has always been present as a theme in Japanese literature, song, and even religion. This element of eternity seems to have its origin in Japan's native religion, Shintoism. It's a religion that revolves around nature, and nature is often described as a cycle where life and death are in constant exchange in order to keep a natural state of balance. So it makes sense that the Japanese would shape their reality around something as eternal as nature. The Japanese cannot think of an existence beyond the realm of nature. For them, nothing. Even Japan's emperor, who is also a deity in Shintoism, is often praised with the blessing of eternity. Japan's well-known suicidal battle cry during its imperial era was Teno Heka Banzai, or Banzai for short. The meaning of this phrase is long live the emperor, or may the emperor live for 10,000 years, again owing to the theme of eternity. Aside from their battle cry or tribute to the emperor, Japan's national anthem, Kimi Gayo, is basically an entire song written around the theme of eternity. The song's lyrics are extremely short, yet convey eternity in a powerful manner. We see eternity's association with nature clearly expressed in this song, as well as Japan's sacred number, that is 10,000 years. To top it all off, the song is even listed as the world's oldest national anthem. Furthermore, Japan's ruling house, the Yamato family, is also the oldest ruling dynasty in the world. Almost everything about Japan seems to embody eternity, the same concept that Inazuma wishes to perfect. If you want to see more comparisons 
between video game lore and real life history, please consider subscribing since that will be my primary focus on this channel. With that being said, thank you and see you in the next video.